For those of you who have been following along with this series, you know that uh, in the last video, uh, I mentioned that my uh, electronics mentor, Brendan, who lives up in the Detroit area, I had lost contact with him and didn't know what happened. You know, several weeks went by, no word whatsoever. I was really worried. Uh, normally, I don't, I'm a person who doesn't get too, uh, you know, too stressed, but this was beginning to wear on me. You know, I didn't hear from him, I didn't hear from him. Uh, it got to the point where I was actually looking at newspaper obituaries up there. I was concerned about him that much. Uh, but normally, I don't get stressed because there's usually a tidbit of information, you know, that kind of gives me a way of possibly figuring out what happened with whatever the situation might be. But there was zero word on Brendan. And uh, I was concerned about it. And you, you know I was concerned about it. Well, and uh, I, the last video I put up on this series was just a short, what, a 30, 40 seconds, 20 seconds, something like that. They said at long last, uh, I had some word from Brandon, and he had had a heart attack, and that's why he couldn't get with me. And I would further elaborate on the next video. Well, this is the next video. And he wrote me an email. I mean, it was like finally an email from Brandon, you know. Oh, I was really worried. I mean, I had made contact with someone on Facebook, or I, I, or I sent a message to someone on Facebook, that was, I believe, one of his relatives. Didn't get an answer from it. So now, you know, I was really, I was really at my wit's end on that. I didn't know what to think. Anyway, I finally get an email from Brendan, and he titles it, "So what happened to Brendan?" Yeah, what happened to Brendan? You know, well, here's the whole story. I guess he sent this uh, email to several people. Basically, he said he had a pain in the chest about five o'clock uh, in the afternoon on the third of September. And his wife rushed him to the emergency room. They took him right in. And over the next two weeks, they determined he had his bile ducts were blocked by a gallstone. You know, that doesn't make me feel good because the other day I had a physical done and I was uh, diagnosed with gallstones myself. Ugh, you know, <laughs> they, they're asymptomatic, but the doc said, as long as they're asymptomatic, don't worry about it. Yeah, right. He, don't, he, you know, he doesn't have these gallstones. Anyway, his bile ducts were blocked and uh, by a gallstone and it also blocked the duct from the pancreas and it gave him pancreatitis well that's no fun and then of course with the pancreatitis problem they put his diabetes way out of control because the pancreas you know is what controls the sugar in your body keeps the level right anyway all this took two weeks to get resolved uh, meanwhile he was weak as a kid and as sick as a dog and uh, it was decided of Instead of going straight home, he would go by way of physical rehab. This was after all the pancreatitis and everything was resolved. Well, you know, he said the same night that he arrived at rehab, about 2.30 in the morning, he suffered a massive heart attack. You know, I, I guess if you're going to have to have all this stuff, might as well get it all done at the same time, right? <laughs> he said he got what's called the Widowmaker. I'd never heard of it referred to as the Widowmaker. It's the artery on the back of the heart. And... Uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I never heard of it. To me, a Widowmaker was a, a tree that lightning hits and falls on you. Anyway, he was rushed to the hospital and uh, they cauterized, uh, they, they cauterized something back in, in the heart, in the uh, artery, and they put a stint in to completely repair the, or open up the block section. So he said, it's now been three weeks from when all this started, he's weak, and all of the systems of his body are way off the mark. And he says, I'm not sure how long it's going to take to, for me to totally recover. Well, I'll tell you what, Brandon, you take as long as you need. There is no rush. Matter of fact, anybody who experiences anything like this, you take as long as you need, okay? And he says, as soon as I get better, uh, I promise to rejoin our conversations and start sending out lots of emails. Uh, until then, good luck to all of you. We'll be talking to you very soon. That was the message he sent to everybody. Well, you know, big load off my mind. I feel much better. I'm reinvigorated now to get this TV finished, and uh, I think I can handle it from here. I don't think I need Brennan to be sending me. I told him, I said, don't be sending out a million emails to everybody in the universe, you know. Rest up. Get rested. Then you can do your emails and all that jazz, you know. But knowing him, you know, that's not going to happen. You know? He'll get back on there and get back on there, and I'll be constantly telling him, get off of there, get off of there. <laughs> so I'm just happy to say... 
Uh, you know, I get, I get, I got close to Brendan, even though we've never physically met. But I'm about to solve that problem. I hope in the spring, and uh, I want to go up and visit him. And uh, I need to lay some wisdom on him about how to relax a little. You know, he's not. He's one of these guys. Everything to him's got to be like right now. And uh, I told him, you know, patience, my friend, patience. He said, well, I'll tell you what about patience. He said, instantaneous for me is about as slow as it gets. So that, <laughs> I got, I'm going to have to give him a little father and son pep talk. And, or I guess I should say son and father. He's a wee bit older than I am, not much. So anyway, we're, getting, we're now, now that I'm all pumped back up again, let's get back to the TV and try to get this thing wrapped up. It won't be wrapped up in this video, but I hope it'll be wrapped up in the next video. This one, we're just going to do a few uh, uh, pattern. I'm going to hook up the pattern generator and put it on the TV, start doing some knob twisting on the back, and kind of give you an idea, if everything goes smoothly, that is, kind of give you an idea what I'll be doing. I'm not going to probably complete the entire thing, but I'll give you an idea how we're going to do it, and then we can go ahead and wrap up the video, and by the next video, it should, I should have it all done, because, you know, it could take me an hour to play with this thing to get it the way it needs to be. And the next video, I hope to have the final conclusion to this TV to where I can sit down and start watching some TV shows. So let's get, let's get started on that right now. The pattern generator that I have is a Sencor CG169. And uh, it's crystal controlled. And you, what all, basically all you do is set your channels. This is a channel selector. And... Uh, it covers both VHF and UHF. We'll be using the uh, the VHF, of course. And I think I'm, I've got our TV set on channel 3. If not, we'll change this to channel 4, whatever it might be. And then, of course, all we have to do then is uh, put the, uh, the patterns that we want on the screen. And this machine will automatically do it. And then, of course, if you have a color uh, a TV, which I do not, you can even put the color bars on there and adjust those out using this. Now, of course, this set is crystal controlled, so for stability, uh, what you do is you go ahead and uh, you flip your switch on, and then the, when the temperature reaches 80 degrees, this light will go out. I believe it's this one. It might be this one. It's either this one or this one. I'm not sure which. I think it's this one. This, when this light goes out, it's ready to go because it heats up to 80 degrees, so it stabilizes everything, in particular that crystal. Now, it only requires two wires to hook up uh, the electrical power cord, okay, it plugs in the wall. Then you've got this little dumaflachi here. This is a, uh, you know, a, uh, a, what they call a ballon or a matching transformer. It hooks to this uh, coax cable that comes out of the unit. You've got a little connector, they supply you with the connectors. Matter of fact, this machine came with a couple of sets of connectors, you know, for connecting uh, the, uh, coax cable and there was an adjustment thing on here somewhere I don't know where that thing oh here it is all the way in the rear and they also supplies you with, I don't know if it came with this unit like that or not but there's a little tweaking tool you know, it's got a little flat blade in the end insulated uh, from the plastic so you can do a little tweaking down in your TV if it needs to be done I don't think I'll need to do any of that It'll, most of the adjustments will be from the rear what we're going to do is I'm going to use the you know the vertical lines the crosshatch pattern the white dots and horizontal lines and what we're going to do is just get those lines left and right good up and down good the dots uh, will be centered in the center uh, get this one right here in the middle hopefully right in the center of the uh, picture and we'll be doing that with the adjustments on the rear of the TV now in order to make life a lot easier in that area I'm going to have a large ruler metal ruler I'm going to take it and lay it corner to corner on the TV screen and I'm going to mark in the center then I'm going to turn it around uh, this way and lay it corner to corner and mark in the center again with a grease pencil or whatever I can find and put a little X there and that'll give me my center point for using for the you know the dots and the crosshatch patterns things of that nature anyway all we're going to do is hook up this uh, this matching transformer which I've already done it and then I'm going to clip these two clips to the antenna screws on the back of the TV one other thing, this is the lid to that pattern generator and it has a mirror in it. Not very big, but you know, it, it, if you're out there running around having a good old time, you know, adjusting TVs from house to house, and this is the only mirror you got, then that's the only mirror you got. It, it comes off of the, uh, it slides right off the test set so you can, you know, prop it up any way you want. 
But Brendan said, you know, if you're going to be doing adjustments on these TVs, what you need to do is go out and get you a big old honking mirror. Well, I'll tell you what, that's not a honking mirror. So I went out and I checked around and, you know, from day to day I'd go into the Salvation Army and I'm going to show you what I found. I found a big old honking mirror. I got that at Salvation Army. And to show you the difference in size between the two, that's the difference in size. This is a big old jobby. I walked in Salvation Army and there it sat. Now this mirror will be sitting vertically, the large honking mirror, in front of the TV where I can see the picture tube while I'm doing my adjustments from the rear of the chassis. Cool, huh? I remember my dad propping up a mirror on the kitchen chair years ago <laughs> for our televisions. He spent more time in the back of that TV than he did in the front. And uh, in any subsequent TV we had, we had Dumont's and Philco's and crap like that. He was always trying to make adjustments. I, I, he had not the foggiest idea what he was doing. He would, you know, he, he'd send he set this outside to turn the antenna, and then we'd have to yell in and out of the window. I know that some of you guys out there had parents that did the same thing. You know, move it here, move it there, turn it left, turn it right to the antenna. You know, well, he made his adjustments. Oh, my Lord, what a time that was. I'm glad those days are over. All right, let's put this honking mirror to use. All right, here we are, and here is the connection to the antenna. I hooked it up. Uh, it, they, uh, the alligator clips wouldn't stay on those screws very well, so I went and hooked it to the rear. Now it's nice and solid. Okay, let's go ahead and flip it on. Let it warm up to 80 degrees. Well, there's the big old honk and mirror in use. And as you can see, I've got the crosshatch pattern, or the crisscross pattern, pretty much in the center. That, that uh, horizontal line sort of jumps up and down once in a while. Pretty close to the... Uh, Pretty darn close to that center X I had there. And of course, you know, we're at the mercy of this being an old television, plus the test equipment I'm using is very old also. So it's not going to be exactly like it was when it was all new, okay? So let's, let's change the patterns to see what we get. Here's our horizontal. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. It, it jumps around a little bit too, but each of the lines is about, about the same. I adjusted it, adjusted it. Got it as you know as close as I could. Let's try the next pattern. Let's try the. Uh, let me get this machine over here where I can get to it. Let's try the vertical lines. They're pretty good. The only problem I'm having is the vertical lines are a lot, little more fuzzy than the horizontal line. I'm sure there's a reason for that. I just don't know what it is. Let's try the. Uh, what is next? Uh, the cross hatch pattern. Again, we have some wavy lines in the center that might be caused by the AGC. I don't know. I'm, I'll worry about this later on when Brendan gets a little bit better. Right now, I just wanted everything to be as, you know, on the left and the right, about the same adjustment on top and bottom. I know that looks like it's flatter on the bottom, but it's really not. It's just the angle of the camera on the screen. And then the white dots. Again, they're pretty good on the top, pretty good on the bottom, and on the right, and on the left, about as good as I can get them, same distance apart all the way down, pretty good. And again, they look like they're closer together at the bottom, but they're not. It's, again, it's the angle of the camera. And then the crosshatch and the dot. See that little white dot there in the center behind that X? Let me see if I can brighten it up a little bit. Let me see, dot size. Let's see if we can brighten up the dot a little bit. There's the dot. You can, you can make it out and back of there. It jumps up and down a little bit. Nothing I can do, but that's pretty darn close to the center as far as I'm concerned. You know, my X might be off a little bit. So let's go ahead and hook it up to a DVD and uh, see what kind of picture we get. Which one of these? Well, the picture's not too bad. However, it's that my old nemesis, the vertical, just will not hold. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, Brendan sent me a long email just before he uh, came down with his uh, affliction. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and review that email. And I'm also going to look at the vertical hold section uh, pot around that area there, check a few voltages. Uh, it's just a matter of dogging it down now. The picture looks real good, though, except for that. 
Stupid vertical. It's always that case with the television with me. It's always the vertical. Anyway, we'll go ahead and call this one uh, ended right now. I got everything functioning fine. That was the big thing. I wanted to make sure everything at least functioned. Anyway, we'll shut her off. Until next time, this is John. People come here to watch.